with David Zritsky for the Bond Experience. Welcome back. We've got an interesting subject today. It's a little mix. It's, it's a little bit of the sartorial bent tied to something that is definitely prop related, and that is masks in the James Bond movie. It's pretty specific, but if you go back and you think about the different movies that we've watched in the franchise, there are masks worn by bad guys, good guys, and this is the video where we're going to be talking about some of those in detail. And we're going to start out with jumping all around. Yeah, we're not going to go in chronological order. That would be too easy. We're going to be talking about my friend over here, Nick Knack. Now, you remember the scene, <laughs> Bond is walking through Grizzly Land, and you see this statue, what you think is the statue, but of course, it is our very own Nick Knack that soon starts to move along with these very glossy looking sumo wrestlers, but then Nick Knack does the unthinkable. He takes his wonderful pitchfork and bonks Bond over the head. And I've got to tell you, I love that mask as a kid. It was both macabre, it had a certain wonderment about it. Masks transform people. I mean, that's the whole purpose of a mask, whether it's a uh, philosophical mask or it's a physical mask. And this right here was made by a friend of mine named Christos. We're going to be highlighting some of his masks today. He's an artist. He does a couple of these just for friends. And boy, this is so cool. I used to have one that kind of looked the part, but look at this thing. This is beautiful. It is hand painted, um, hand designed. I'm not too sure how he does it, but the magic is pretty obvious. This looks like the prop from the movie. Now there's, there's probably some uh, artistic interpretations that are going on right here, but boy, does it look the part. And you can see that it really does capture that wonderful cultural look that you see in the movie of her Velezquez wearing that mask. And if you take a look at behind, Christos even designed it very much like the prop in the movie. So it's interesting how these masks have become somewhat collectible, but also a sign of the character. So yeah, I usually put my environments that are behind me uh, very much in a purposeful way. You see Spectre over here. Well, what you haven't seen a lot of highlight when we talk about masks is Sciara. Sciara from the Mexico scene, the Mexico City scene, the PTS. He's wearing that mask, very identifiable with the hat, with the really striking white or light beige suit. And here is again from Christos, uh, one of these masks, look at the detail on this thing. I love it. I mean, the fact that it's grimacing. When I went to Mexico City and went to um, the Zucalo and, and just in the city center, you saw masks that looked exactly like this. Here, take a look at behind this. So this is actually wearable. I mean, I, I could put it on. I am putting it on. And it really does capture that moment. So you know that we've had a lot of discussion of Bond masks from Spectre of different types, but now you've got an interpretation that is the bad guy. And it's so wonderful. It's such a calming scene. And let's face it, whatever you want to say about Spectre, a lot of people have very positive things to say about the PTS. So to capture the bad guy moment in a mask form is a pretty cool thing. Now, in no way is this next piece accurate, but we have to we have to mention from Russia with love, of course, that beginning scene where you think that Red Grant has killed Bond until he slowly whips off a mask of James Bond and underneath is a moustached individual, a gentleman that unfortunately met his demise. But Red Grant, nice job. So that was a mask. Of course, it introduced this whole idea that Red Grant was after Bond and being trained for it. So this, this whole idea of a thin mask, which I'm not going to lift off this display. This is actually clearly from my Thunderbolt display, not my From Russia With Love display, was just a thin kind of mask. You hear the which I love that sound. And then suddenly you've got Connery's kind of flipping mask waving in the wind, but it is a mask. And so we had to be completists and mention it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Living Daylights, Timothy Dalton. And this is a mask. Now it's a gas mask, but don't forget Q put his key finder 
Phillips key finder right on that mask and used it as an amazing demonstration. But the masks themselves you see in a couple of the films. You also see them in Moonraker before they go into Drax's alleged uh, ballroom where all of the equipment was. And of course that, that, that mask, uh, that, excuse me, that gas dropped and they didn't want to get gas themselves. So they wore gas masks. So you see gas mask. I'm actually saying that correctly. Or am I just blurring that all together? I'm sure you'll comment below. Oh yeah, you will. But they wear them in quite a few of the films. So we had to show this one off from the collection, Living Daylights. There we go. Of course, we also had to have a promotional moment. I mean, in the seventies, especially, but even the sixties, let's face it, everything was James Bond. This was something I remembered having even as a kid. Yes, it is a mask and it is Jaws. It's a Moonraker Jaws mask that was licensed by the Ben Cooper Corporation. It came with a full outfit. And by the way, look how tiny that mask is. That was for a little kid. It would not fit my Charlie Brown noggin. No, it would not. But I, I had to show it to you today because again, there were promotional masks. That's how indelible masks are in the James Bond series. But happily, Richard Keel wore the teeth, never wore a mask. So there you go. For this next one, I know what you're going to say, David, 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 that's not a mask. He was wearing makeup, true, but it's a disguise. So of course I had to show it. Going back to Octopussy, some people find this image incredibly frightening, so you could see it as a mask, but uh, it's a mask of makeup. And this is of course our very own Roger Moore as the clown from Octopussy. And you can see the hat, the flower, the hair, the bow tie, the cigar, the nose, everything kind of puts it together. But this was Bond in disguise. And I know a lot of people think Octopussy is outrageous and crazy, but I actually think this is pretty cool. I mean, he was infiltrating a circus. So what are you going to do? You're going to dress as an elephant? I don't think so. I don't think you're going to fool a lot of people. A clown jumping into a clown cart and finding some costume and some makeup and doing yourself up. I think it's pretty ingenious and I think it passes the test of intrigue, if you will, of Bond, maybe not taking himself too seriously, but dressing up as a clown. If, if right now you went onto Google and put in James Bond mask, one image would come up probably for the next five pages. And that's this image right here. Now, for a while, this was what the only thing we really thought we had when we talked about the Spectre PTS Mexico Bass, the one that Bond wore that we were like, that is totally badass. This was one I believe I actually bought from Mexico of all places, not in Mexico, but it was on eBay, probably still on eBay right now. Pretty good. I actually used a hair dryer to form it a little bit so it would fit my head better, and it does. It actually does fit my head and you can wear the top hat with it. You could wear it as a costume. It clasps onto the back and it was really a nice alternative. And then of course we have an entire review on YouTube that you could check out of Factory Entertainment. And Factory Entertainment came out with a much higher end um, and obviously higher priced mass that uh, we've reviewed in detail. So we're not going to go over too much here, but this was obviously the mask with display from Factory Entertainment from Spectre. So we had to cover this, even though we have an entire video about it, because it's like the James Bond mask. I mean, when people talk about it, when people research it, this is what comes up. You would think that some of the other things would come up, but no, this is the one that pops up all the time, which is why we are standing in front of Spectre. It's, in fact, chances are our thumbnail for this probably has some aspect of this mask in it. Just saying. Now I want to give fair warning. We are about to set foot into major spoiler territory. Now spoilers are spoilers, whether they're factual or they're speculation or whatever. So I'm just giving you a warning. This is your opportunity to go. Thanks, David, about the mask information. Goodbye. So here we go. We are now into no time to die. And interestingly enough, some of you may have seen this mask before. Again, another crystal special. You could see some of the uh, obliteration and the damage on the side here. You've got cut out eyes. 
You may recognize it from the NPL no, uh, no Time to Die Navy sweater video. It was worn by our own Joe Darlington. There you can see some of the details. I mean, look at the damage that he did with this to the mask. So he really replicated that trailer look. However, yeah, that just happened. It didn't break, I swear. And you would think that we would edit that out, but this is the Bond experience where things happen one moment at a time. It's in good shape. It's, this, is, this is nice and sturdy. Probably wouldn't take a bullet hit, but let's hope we never have to try it. I'm gonna put this down safely. But what's really cool is Christos is a perfectionist. So he sent me this updated one, which actually has the painted eyes. So in a lot of the, the visuals, pictures, images, and yes, the new trailers, you see that there's painted eyes and look at the damage, including he noticed that there is a, maybe a bullet hole that obliterated this. Who knows? We don't know. It's all speculation, but the, the type of, and you could see this in the light, the damage now that he's put and applied to this prop replica is pretty astounding. And yes, it's a uh, James Bond license to kill. Yeah, that's terrible. But you can see the detail is amazing. And that's what a mask is all about. It really needs to capture that look. But he did something. He looked at the trailer where you see what we think is Safin kind of within the window. Is it Q's window? Is it Madeline's window? Whose window is it? But he kind of shifts back and forth. We, at least we think it's him. Is it him? We don't know. So here comes some crazy speculation. So Christos slowed down the film and started to literally piece together images of the, of the film and filling in the gaps where the windows wouldn't be. So if we took away the window, what would that mask look like when it doesn't look like this? It looks like this. And you actually see this in one of the posters, this, this mask. Is it Safin or is it? somebody else. And so he actually made a mask that matches that trailer look and the poster look again with the painted eyes. So here are the, here are the two masks. All right. Now, then he did one better. He sent this, which you're ready for this. You open up And I'm going to position this so hopefully you can see this. But the, these are the masks next to each other, undamaged, damaged, or, or let's offer something new. Is this a his and her? Is it brother and sister? Just an idea. No hate. But this was an interesting display that Christos did of the two masks together, almost like in a miniature. And these are miniature. You can see these aren't full size. There are a display that he set up. So you can take these masks into a lot of different areas for sure and explore them. But James Bond not only uses scars and um, deformities and aliases and double crosses and dispatches. It uses masks in some really interesting ways in the James Bond franchise. These were just a few. I'm sure there are more, but it was a great way to explore them together. This has been David Zaritsky for The Bond Experience, and we will see you real soon. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.